Κυρίε και κύριοι, γεια σα. Βρισκόμαστε στην τουρκοκρατούμενη περιοχή τη Λευκοσία, έξω από το κτίριο, το κτίριο το οποίο οι Τούρκοι ονομάζουν Προεδρικό Μέγαρο. Σε λίγα λεπτά θα έχουμε την ευκαιρία να μιλήσουμε με τον κύριο Ραούφ Τεχτάση, τον άνθρωπο τον οποίο οι περισσότεροι από εμά θεωρούμε τον κακό δαίμονα τη Κύπρου και τον άνθρωπο υπεύθυνο για τα δεινά που μα βρήκαν. Κύριε Τεχτάση, thank you for accepting the invitation to appear on my show. I would um, like, before we start, I put my cards on the table and tell you that I'm not here as a journalist. I am not a journalist, as you know. I am not a political analyst. I am not a historian. And I don't claim to know the Cyprus problem in depth. I am here, as Stavros Sideras, a citizen of Cyprus. And I, I believe, like most uh, Cypriots, both Turkish and Greek, I am anxious um, and concerned about the future of this country. Now, you're one of the key players in this uh, political chess game. And as such, I know that you hold most of the answers to the questions concerning the future of Cyprus. I know that to get to these answers, to the real answers, I have to go beyond the facade of the shrewd politician that people claim that you are and find uh, the real, Ralph Dentash. So let me start by asking you, Mr. Dentash, who are you? Who are you really? First of all, let me ask you. Are you interviewing me as a persona or persona non grata? I think, Mr. Ignacio, you are one of the very few people I know that uh, you have both qualities. I think for some people you are definitely a persona, but for the, a lot of us you are a persona non grata. Well, let us see if we can change that. Okay. So, who is really Mr. Dektash? I was born in Paphos in 1924. My father was a judge. And as such, uh, he had very good uh, friends in the uh, in, in, Greek. His, in his profession. Uh -huh. He knew perfect Greek. He, he had uh, he could read and write Greek. He had very good Greek friends. So we were not brought up in an atmosphere of Greeks are different than Turks. Mm -hmm. Uh, the only thing when I used to listen to him with his friends uh, was uh, Greeks get a little mad when they think about enosis. And it even is, it as is early, the church. Yes. Even as early as then. Uh, I, I, because I, I, believe I go back to my seven years. Seven, because seven I believe years. in those uh, days, Mr. Nektash, um, the real enemy was poverty. It wasn't the Greeks, it wasn't the it Turks. Is true. Really, it, is true. it was it hard is true. times and everybody had to but fight yet, uh, for a good life. Uh, whenever Enosis was mentioned, mm -hmm. there was some uh, disturbance. But this surprises me because in 1950, <coughs> when there was a, a, a declaration to find that whether the Cypriot people, both Greek and Turkish, uh, wanted Enosis, the majority of the Turks uh, voted for it. Well, you, you, are, you, are, you are misinformed. I am. You are really misinformed. Um, no, no such thing happened. No such thing happened. Uh, if this is your information, then uh, you have to clear your slate again. Okay, I think let's come but, to this. But I am, I am referring, I am okay. talking about when I'm seven years old, about 1930s, 31 mm -hmm. and then there is the riot against yes. the British, and then all the churchmen, all the leaders of Enosis are sent away, and uh, from 1931 to 1945, end of the Second World War, mm -hmm. I refer to it as the golden age of intercommunal relations, because under the oppressive British rules, mm -hmm. there was no talk about Enosis, no movement for Enosis, nothing at all. So there was no reason for Turks to feel fear or to be threatened. dominated or threatened. By and the those country. were the golden years, really. Let me ask you something, Mr. Dektash. I read somewhere that your father was a shepherd, and then he sort of climbed to finally be a judge. And not only that, he was uh, given the MB, the mem became a member of the British Empire. Is this true? Uh, my father was a village boy uh, who came from uh, Ayos of Ifanius uh, at the age of 16. He was a tall man, tall boy, and he passed himself off as 18 and entered the police force. Mm -hmm. And in the police force, uh, continuously reading, uh, educating himself, he learned Greek uh, through uh, the Mukhtar of Varosha then, uh, to whom we referred as uh, uncle, uh, they were so close. Yes. And uh, he studied English, then he started taking uh, 
correspondence lessons in law. Then he left the police force as a sergeant and he entered the civil service here. And uh, from civil service, because he had studied law, he was uh, appointed as a, a judge uh, and went upwards. Mm -hmm. His MBE, his yes. MBE is, is a very, very significant thing. He was re regarded as a follower of Kemalist reforms and he was followed up uh, by uh, British agents all through. And uh, each year the British had to give MBE to a number of people here, mm -hmm. as it, in all colonies. So the, when the turn, my father's turn came, they uh, thought of a very, very good trick how to make him lose face vis-a-vis -vis his people. Uh, the governor told him uh, through the chief justice uh, you have to wear a fez while getting the MBE. My father was very disturbed, of course, I said, but uh, I have thrown the fez away so many years, I can't mm -hmm. put it on again. And he said, yeah, but this is the order of the governor. And then my father used his brains and said, but under what law is he ordering me to wear a fez? Is there a law about uh, what to wear while getting the MBE? And uh, that was it. So he was asked, don't come then with anything on. And I still have his picture. And uh, the governor is looking away while giving him the MBE. Really? From oh, yes. He was, uh, uh, had, had the chief justices who were really mm -hmm. honest, impartial mm -hmm. people not protected him, mm -hmm. he would have suffered a lot in the hands of mm -hmm. the uh, governors then. You've always, uh, in your whole life, uh, been involved in, uh, in, in the law. I mean, uh, your father obviously was a great stature in, in your life, and uh, I'm sure that uh, he passed along this love for justice and the law. Um, uh, and this kind you in your studies, right? You studied uh, the law. Yes. I would not have taken law up had he not died just when I was finishing the English school. Uh, I, I, I didn't intend to. I wanted to be a veterinary or, uh, surgeon or uh, I, I, wish I had loved become, animals. Mr. Well, that would not have defended <laughs> me <laughs> taking care of the Hopefully somebody else would have been in your position now, more <laughs> sort of... Uh, well, I don't uh, know. I don't know. Easy. But when point. he died, when he died, uh, he always used to inculcate me that this community needs courageous writers and uh, uh, courageous uh, lawyers. We haven't got it, and you should be. And I, I, I always thought, this man doesn't love me. Why? Because uh, when I was a young boy, the British used to uh, put his friend, the editor of Sirs, into prison every now and again, and I had to carry uh, food to his family uh, for 15 days, for 11 days from our house. They were very good friends because he used to write anti-British articles. Mm -hmm. uh, the man was put uh, into prison, punished, he uh, had no money and so on. So I said, uh, why does he want me to become a writer uh, when uh, his closest friend suffers so? Then, of course, I realized. So his death uh, made me say, I'll take up law. It was uh, as if you owed him uh, yes, the promise yes, and so yes. on. Tell me about these early days uh, of your studies, Mr. Mektaj. You go to England to study uh, and I believe there you have uh, lots of Greek friends. I got a scholarship from the British Council, yes. uh, but to get it, I had to serve as a school teacher at the English school for a year. Mm -hmm. What were you teaching? Uh, the first class, everything, uh -huh. everything. And uh, then I, I, I realized that Mr. Sims, the headmaster, had given me this uh, uh, job in order to make me love uh, teaching and continue uh, my scholarship as a teacher, as a teacher. and not, not, not uh, prefer law. Uh, I found the teaching a very sacrificing, very difficult job. In which way? Uh, to, to teach those children, you have to give something from yourself all the way, all the time. And you must not be angry with them. You must be very patient with them. And the uh, you, must, you must be in their context, within those The children limits. that um, you had in your class, were they uh, both uh, Greeks and Turkish? In the first class, they were Turks, uh, separate Greeks, Turks and Armenians. Uh -huh. so, you were and Armenians. so you were teaching? I, first class, Turks, 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 Tur
uh, in England, uh, contrary to what you think, we didn't have uh, Greek friends in, in that sense, mm -hmm. because we were at the inns, inns of court, where, uh, and, and I, I, I had gone to England during the war, at the end of the war, 1944. The war was still on. Mm -hmm. The doodle bugs, as they called it, the flying bombs were mm -hmm. on. And uh, some people who had uh, got uh, scholarships rejected it. I said, no, this is my only chance I will go. My brother wrote me from Turkey saying, if you do go under this, uh, these conditions, you are not my brother. I'm not going to suffer uh, uh, agony for you mm -hmm. because you will be killed. And I said, thank you, brother, but you can't teach, uh, give me an education. I have no one to give me an education. I'm going. So you had, a, you had this tough adamant character from your early days. Yes, uh, if you call it tough and adamant. Uh, what my father taught me was, uh, there is no fear which uh, can prevent you from doing what you intend to do. The only thing that you should fear is God. During that time, uh, Mr. Kleridis also, I believe, was uh, in uh, Raf. Teacher, you cross uh, uh, during that time? I met, no, I met Kleridis in 1949. I came back in 1947 mm -hmm. and started practicing in Nicosia. Uh, Kleridis came, I think, in 1949, thereabouts and uh, he was in his father's office. Uh, so we started meeting uh, as opposite numbers in, in court cases. Yes, tell me something before we and get into And it was very this. good. Tell me something before we get into these court cases and to get to Mr. Glenidis. During this time, uh, your upbringing, uh, you had a very fair father, uh, he was uh, a judge. Um, did you have any resentment towards the Greeks until no. this time? No, no, Be no resentment, but uh, as uh, we, we lived in very near here, and around us were Greeks, uh, Greeks uh, boys also, mm -hmm. and Armenians. Mm -hmm. So it was a mixed sort of quarter, mm -hmm. majority Turkish, but it was a mixed quarter. The reason I ask you this is because during the um, Aeoga struggle, you represented the crown, and during this uh, period of time, uh, your critics say that you were a very tough um, solicitor, uh, a barrister, whatever mm -hmm. you call yourself then. Uh, and that um, some people go as far as saying that they hold you responsible for the deaths of some of the boys, including Garaulis, one of uh, our yoga boys. He's the only one, really. Uh, well, I'm surprised at this because uh, Mr. Christophinis, uh, I think he's dead now, and, and others, I'm on record in the Greek press and in the Cyprus Mail then, mm -hmm. as, uh, as the f a very fair prosecuting officer who doesn't press uh, his cases, and uh, uh, and I was like that, especially in murder cases. Mm -hmm. If I had the slightest chance mm -hmm. of reducing it to manslaughter, mm -hmm. I did it. And Do Mr. Pascalis was uh, in the in the law office with us, mm -hmm. a crown counsel, a senior crown counsel, and he would fight every single inch of it in order to convict for murder, and uh, the judges used to get very angry with him. I hope he is well in a, a, around. He's a very good lawyer, a very good man also. But he was, if if he was given a case, he wanted to to convict. Let I I was the contrary, so I'm surprised I, at this. This is what I want to ask. Uh, I mean, obviously you're a Cypriot. You grew up with um, with the Cypriot boys and so on. So the thing that I know that you you were doing your job. Uh, I mean, you know, even if it's uh, so hard for us to 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 accept that this is how law works. Uh, you have a prosecuting um, officer, you have uh, uh, somebody to defend. But subconsciously, when you were faced with situations where somebody, a young boy, 17, 18, 19 years old, was going to be hanged, whether subconsciously you felt that um, maybe you had to bend the law a bit to try and save their life? Uh, well, as I say, uh, Aoka cases were f with me for a limited time. Then the uh, British prosecutors were brought. So the only case uh, in which uh, there was a death sentence was the Karaoris case in my, in my instance. How did you I personally feel about the August uh, trial? I, I felt very sorry for that young man, very sorry indeed. No, I'm not talking and about Karaoris. Uh, no. How did you feel about the struggle of the Cypriot people, of the Greek Cypriot people at that time, since you decided uh, as a community not to participate I'll and tell to you side this. with the British? I'll tell you How this. did you feel about I'll the struggle? I'll tell you this. Had the struggle been for independence, 
I am sure most of the Turkish Cypriots would be with uh, the Greek Cypriot side. It wasn't for independence, it mm -hmm. was for enosis. And enosis for us was changing colonial masters for the worse. And uh, we, we, we would never have it. Our upbringing from the, from the very earliest days was, as uh, it is for the Greek Cypriots, uh, Cyprus is Greek. For us, Cyprus is Turkish. This is how we were brought up. And Turkey has gone from Cyprus temporarily, and Turkey will come back. This is this is our background. This but is our education. But how can a place, Mr. Nektash, be but be it, Turkish when the majority of people, 80 percent of the population, is Greek? I mean, doesn't this by itself, in numbers, portray the real character and uh, uh, ethnicity of a place? Now, if you if you look at Cyprus as an uh, isolated island, yes. But you, you, if you look at it as an island destined to unite with Greece or with Turkey, mm -hmm. uh, then the uh, majority is the Turkish side. And uh, then the uh, geopolitical reasons, historical reasons, how British got it from the Turks and so on, all these things were part of our uh, upbringing, part of our psychology. So you, can, you cannot argue this on uh, basis of reason. This is a belief, as you believe, as your children are brought up to believe that Cyprus is Greek and must be part of Greece, we were brought up to believe that Cyprus is Turkish and shall be Turkish. And this was uh, the reason of conflict in Cyprus. Now, uh, the, therefore, the 1960 compromise for us was an honorable compromise, which we did not like, but we said this is an honorable compromise which has to be kept. But uh, before we get to the 1960 compromise, as you put it, Mr. Natash, um, you get into politics, I believe in 1956, so uh, it's 40 years now you're in the political arena. You cut off 10 years, but it doesn't matter. Really? You were before then? Yes. I, well, I, 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 I believe well, that you became active in 1956. Very active, yes. So, I, I mean, so far as uh, maybe history is going to show in the future, um, you, for 40 years, uh, have been actively in the political arena. And um, let me ask you, when did you decide, as your strategy, about Taksim, about s dividing Cyprus into two? Um, uh, because this, I believe, was your policy. I, I didn't decide it. Uh, first of all, let me tell you a story. From uh, in 1948, I'm just a lawyer and a representative uh, in the in the uh, constitutional commission, which was then afoot, and the constitutional commission was closed down because uh, the rightist, the church, attacked Akel, who was attending it, and Akel walked out, and uh, I made. Uh, a, na a name, I suppose, somehow, that from Vima, from Athens, a journalist came and wanted to see me, uh, to take a statement from me. I said, I have no mandate from my people to talk anything. He said, doesn't matter, I'm, I want to talk to you as... Uh, Off the record. Oh, oh, no, man to man, uh -huh. uh, as a Cypriot. And he came down to ask me, what would you do if there was uh, a gnosis mm -hmm. applied in Cyprus? I said, I don't believe that it will be. So uh, I don't want to uh, answer this question. He said, oh, but Mr. Zengtash, why? Why are you afraid? Suppose that there is enosis. What will the Turkish Cypriots do? Well, I said, I can only talk my, for myself. We, my generation, I know my friends, we would take up guns and we would be up in the hills fighting against. And he laughed uh, at me. But next day, this was in the press, and uh, I had very good friends in the courts. I had come as a young lawyer, Greek uh, registrars and assistant registrars who knew my father, who had worked with my father, were helping me. Uh, they were very good friends. That day, after this article appeared and I went in, everybody turned his back to me. And uh, the Turkish uh, number two was there and told me, well, don't expect any more nice, smiling faces. So even your people, uh, you're saying, uh, were against your philosophy or your ideas? Not my people, the Greek Cypriots working, the Greek Greek Cypriots working in I the see. registry. Uh, who were Did you have the support of the majority of the, of the Turkish people uh, in, in, when? In, in, in stating that you were ready to get uh, to go to the mountains and, uh, uh, I was, and fight against the Gnosis? I was, I was giving uh, the views of my closest friends. They mm -hmm. were all young people. 
24, 25 years but old. But the, the reason uh, you were so much against the Nazis, Mr. Nekash, was it because uh, for some reason um, you were frightened of, uh, of, of Greece uh, or, or whether um, uh, you have what some people today claim, you're a fanatic Turk and you hated the, Tur the Greeks and you hated the idea of joining up with Greece, um, or was it because you had ideals of your own? No, we, we, uh, first of all, uh, we had our ideals that Cyprus is Turkish. I mean, my, my grandfather uh, brought me up uh, I had lost my uh, uh, mother when I was 18 months old, mm -hmm. and my grandfather brought me up. And that man used to tell us, he was the man who, who watched the Turkish flag come down and British flag raised it. First of all, ideally, we regarded this land as a Turkish land. Every corner had a, uh, fallen from the 1571, and when the Greek municipalities removed them, there was a lot of uh, anger within the community. So, so this was thing was talked about. But the uh, other thing which made us say no was colonization. We didn't want to be colonized. And I repeat, had the Greek Cypriot fight been for independence, for, for its own sake, mm -hmm. we would have been together. You said that every corner in Cyprus uh, resembled or reminded you of the, of the Turkish uh, period uh, that we say was occupied by uh, the Ottoman Empire because every corner of Cyprus, thousands of years before, the Greeks were there, uh, the Greeks are here. And we find uh, the, the, uh, our archaeological findings and uh, they, all of these signs show that it is a Greek island. But you find, you find archaeological findings in, in, in Turkey. You find archaeological sure. findings everywhere in the world. Sure. Maybe, you don't maybe, go by should, maybe should, you should leave Turkey also. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you, 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 don't, you don't go by that. Uh, here, you see, the approach was uh, Cyprus has two different peoples, and it hasn't got a nation. There is no Cypriot nation. Makarios declared this several times, and he said, we are Hellens, we are Hellens of Cyprus, and we shall unite with Mother Greece. That being the case, not treating the other part as part of you, as part of Cyprus, but looking at it as a different minority. And that minority saying, I am part of uh, Turkey here. If he is Greek, I am Turk. Do you feel so, this is one of our biggest mistakes? Um, I'm talking about representing the Greek side. Do you feel that uh, the fact that we did not, as you say, accept you as part of us from the beginning, perhaps this is one of our biggest mistakes? Well, I think had Makarios or even uh, people before him done this, uh, accommodated us as part of uh, uh, Cyprus and treated us as such, I don't think we'd have had any difficulty. I don't think so. I think that is, that is the thing which uh, put us against the wall all the time. And, uh, so there is resentment in you, Mr. Nektash, and perhaps there is resentment in every Turkish Cypriot. Uh, uh, resentment, maybe. Resentment because you resent people who do not regard you as an equal. You, do, you do resent people who look down upon you. But hatred, no hatred. No hatred. No hatred. Uh, you can't live with hatred. I, I have seen... Uh,